My name is Erica Peterson. I'm a neurosurgeon here at UAMS, and I'm here to talk to you today about trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal neuralgia is a face pain disorder that's uh, suffered by a variety of people. Uh, usually this develops as something that uh, affects half of the face, often around the eye, forehead, or cheek area. It can also be confused with having tooth pain, uh, and often people will see a dentist before they actually see a surgeon or another physician. It's characterized by periodic pains that are shooting in nature, uh, often coming and going in episodes and it can feel like a pulsing pain. It's typically not constant and so sometimes you can have episodes that uh, happen minute to minute to minute and then have a break from that. There are medications that can help improve trigeminal neuralgia and that's often the first thing to try. And if patients have good response to taking medications, then they don't need a surgical treatment. It's when the symptoms get worse to the point where medications no longer help and the symptoms are excruciating and inter uh, often interfering with daily life that surgical options can be considered and one of those is radiosurgery. Surgical treatments for trigeminal neuralgia are most commonly of three types. All of them are designed to address the effect of compression on the nerve and the fact that the nerve is sending abnormal pain signals into the brain. One of those treatments is a surgical procedure called microvascular decompression. It's uh, really a uh, keyhole brain surgery during which we go using a microscope uh, to look at the brain stem to where the nerve leaves the brain going into the face. And often there's a blood vessel in contact with the nerve there, causing um, by its pulsations uh, the, the triggering of these pain sensations. We can pad the blood vessel away from the surface of the nerve and often get over 50% relief in patients about 90% of the time. If patients don't seem to be good candidates for the brain surgery operation of that sort, then we have other procedures that include a rhizotomy procedure, which can also disrupt pain fibers within the nerve, and then radiosurgery. Radiosurgery has the advantage of not requiring anesthesia, uh, and it's a day procedure done in our gamma knife suite. There are other pr types of uh, radiosurgery procedures, but our procedure here uses the gamma knife itself. All three surgical approaches to treatment of trigeminal neuralgia have good results, and most will res uh, have good response for most patients. So for all patients, individual preference is one of the things that a surgeon and a patient have to consider when deciding which surgical treatment to uh, undergo. For gamma knife radiosurgery, often patients have multiple medical comorbidities that mean that their risk of undergoing anesthesia-related procedures is higher. Also, some patients can be very afraid of having a surgery requiring anesthesia in an operating room, and for those patients, they may consider radiosurgery as a first treatment. However, it's important to realize that all three surgical options, microvascular decompression, rhizotomy, and radiosurgery, have a recurrence rate. And actually for radiosurgery, it's a small bit higher than it is with the other procedures. And therefore, in making the decisions, it's important not just to think about the risks of the procedure itself, but also the long-term durability and the likelihood of response. And these are things that we talk about during a surgical consultation for a patient with trigeminal neuralgia. The advantage of gamma knife radiosurgery for treatment of trigeminal neuralgia is that it's a day procedure that doesn't require anesthesia. Often patients who have multiple medical comorbidities who may not be able to withstand going to sleep for an, uh, an operation are patients who might be good candidates for radiosurgery. Additionally, some patients are afraid of having anesthesia and requiring a, a actual brain surgery. And in that case, using a neurosurgical approach with radiosurgery may be something more comfortable for them. These are the sorts of concerns that we talk about with a patient when we see them in consultation because it's important not just to talk about the procedure and the associated risks of it, but also talk about what the long-term uh, res response might be with that procedure and what the chances are of the pain recurring after treatment. All gamma knife radiosurgery procedures are relatively self-contained. You arrive the day of the procedure, uh, you undergo the procedure, and you get to go home the same day of the procedure. Most patients have a small chance of feeling some fatigue after a long day like that, plus the radiation exposure of the procedure, but most are ready to go back to their normal activities within a couple of days. A day procedure like this is an advantage when you're thinking about the, uh, the long-term recovery, which is sometimes required with other brain surgery procedures. 
For example, there's no need for an overnight stay in the hospital, nor need for any sort of uh, stay in the ICU following surgery. So for most patients uh, who opt for and undergo gamma knife radio surgery, the ability to return to their own bed and, and their own routine at home that night is a, a real advantage to them. Additionally, the procedure itself is relatively well tolerated. There's no need for uh, anesthesia other than some uh, medication to help with sedation to make feel patients feel comfortable during the procedure, and usually very little blood loss or other risks of infection or other downsides of the procedure. The biggest complications and concerns relate to the radiation exposure itself, and this is something that we as the neurosurgeons and the radiation oncologists will review with the patient prior to deciding on going forward with the procedure.